Hey everyone, here we have my 2019 Triumph Tiger XRX Factory Low. I've done about 2,100 miles on it now, so I'm just going to talk you through my, my interim or medium range owner's review on this. From new, I had the arrow cam put on it. I also had the spotlights put on the front as well, which are just here. As you can see here, I've had aftermarket or I fitted some decent horns instead of the rubbishy little beepy thing that all manufacturers stick on their bikes. I have the controls for my heated clothing just here. I also have fitted a sat nav ball with power as well and that's the TomTom -tom rider. So since I've had it I've changed the tyres as well because the, the Metzler Torrances were awful. I'm going to go into a proper review. I've put Avons on this now but I'll do the review later on on them. Other than that the bike is pretty standard still. It's 800cc, 94 brake horsepower, 760 to 780 millimetres adjustable seat height on the low version. It's got cruise control, traction control, it's got the TFT dash of which I've had a problem. Pop the key in, turn it on. And the screen's dead. That's it, nothing. So I couldn't legally ride it because it didn't have a speedometer. But the new dash is fitted. I love the dash. You can change the styles of the dash as well. It's all clever stuff. But I'm worried that a lot of these manufacturers now have had problems with dashes, BMW included. So how long are these TFT dashes going to last for and at what point does the warranty run out? Is it still a year or two years or what have you? So once this dash goes, £900 to replace it. So that's something you might need to consider when you buy one of these things. Switch gear is pretty intuitive. You've got your uh, menu buttons just here which comes up on the screen. Also on the left hand side you've got your cruise control which is nice on the left hand side because on my gold wing it's on the right and it's a bit awkward operating it when you've got your throttle like this and you're having to operate it with your thumb but on the left hand side I've got the spotlights just there or the cruising lights or whatever you want to call them. This thing, that button there, it's like, I thought it was the high beam and low beam, it's not, it's just a side lights button. Why bother with that? Why not just have your lights on all the time and then all you have to worry about is your high beam and low beam just here. Heated grips, fitted on the left hand side, built in. A little bit fiddly to get to with your thumbs. The warning light comes on here showing that your heated grips are on and of course they automatically turn themselves off when you turn the ignition off. The screen is also adjustable, so you can pull it away, push it towards you etc. Depending on how high or low you are, height wise. You've also got the maps here. There's basically four modes. Hilly Mountain, Rainy, Straighty, Curvy. But this bike is actually um, one of the bikes that can be used in the UK for A2 compliance. So they can fit a restrictor kit on this for under 24s that have passed the test and they can ride it around with the restrictor on, which is really cool. Displays at the bottom here, I actually prefer the display where it tells you how many miles per gallon you get in on average, also your tank range. You've got a very accurate fuel gauge there. When you first fill it up, it doesn't show that you filled it up until about a mile or so, and then it registers and, and uh, puts it to the correct setting for you. Currently doing 61.7 miles per gallon, which is a lot of time riding, to be honest. I've done a lot of lessons. So 61 to the gallon is pretty impressive. Screen-wise... I like the fact that this screen isn't electric for some reason. You pull it away from you or push it away from you whilst you're riding. You can lower the screen or you can raise the screen to one, two, three, four, five settings. Let's get these spots on. Let's show you them. There you go. The screen is actually better than a Pan European. It throws the wind off really nicely. The deflectors here hit the, wind, the hand deflectors. And even in winter when it's really, really cold, it does throw a surprising amount of cold air off you. So, spot on with the screen. Horns, there was nowhere else to mount them but there. I changed the tyres because the Metzlers were awful. And I've also put a different camera on here for some spirited riding so you can see the suspension work. <clears throat> I think it weighs about 220 kilos, which isn't very light to be honest. 
start it up. Sounds lovely. That triple engine is just beautiful. It's very torquey, six speed. And that exhaust has just got a lovely note to it. Let's go and take it for a play. Gearbox is ultra smooth. Slow speed balance is beautiful. If you want to have a look at the balance, have a look at my slow speed upload I've recently done. I did it on this Triumph and you'll see how slowly this thing can go. Stickers wise, just want to show you this. Bikers, think car, because you shouldn't rely on others for your safety. Training is for life, your life. The reason I got those printed, or I had those printed, is because a lot of people have got Think Bike stickers, and I can understand the saying to other cars, can you please think about us? I would much rather say to you, think about yourself, mate. Those cars ain't going to stop coming out on you. They ain't going to stop doing overtakes right in your face. It's down to you to be able to anticipate these things happening, okay? That's it, preach over. Let's go for a play. So let's bring it up to 50. Cruise is switched on. Set cruise. This cruise is set at 51. So I'm just going to knock it down one. One mile an hour increments it to adjust that in. And there we go. The cruise is holding at 50. If you want to knock the cruise off, you either pull the clutch in, touch either of your brakes, or just close your throttle. got loads of torque though, it's got bags of pull. And it sounds incredible with that exhaust on it. There's hardly any vibrations through the foot pegs or handlebars. The riding position is spot on. Couldn't fault it. This bike's also fitted with the comfort seat, which is an option. And for very skinny people like me, all right. For people with bony bums like me, the comfort seat actually works well, but you do have to run it in for a little bit. When you first get it, it is quite hard and firm. So you have to do at least a few hundred miles on the thing to start getting that padding to bed in a little bit. Put it into six gear. Resume on the cruise, which was 50 miles an hour. And there we go. This cramp buster on here is only for when I do lessons and I'm in, uh, in town. It just takes that little bit of weight off your wrists. But the cruise control is incredible. I'm so impressed with it. Works beautifully well, unlike the dash. Mirrors are fantastic. No vibrations whatsoever. You can only just see your elbows in them, but they're incredibly clear and very well placed. It takes the bumps really well. Suspension's fantastic on it. I haven't had to adjust anything. It is adjustable on the rear only by the looks of it. But there's no need to. It's set up really nice from the factory. The only thing I'm not totally happy with from the factory is the steering. It's the third Triumph I've ridden now where it seems like they've ever so slightly over tightened the steering. It's the only way to describe it. It's nothing to do with the tyres, it's almost like it needs knocking off a sixteenth on the, on the steering adjustment. On the cornering, you have to be a little bit more careful on the XRX low. Because it's lowered, there's a very great risk of the foot pegs scraping on the floor. That's happened to me. I've heard of some people removing the long hero blob that's on the side. Check with your insurance before you remove hero blobs. Brakes wise, they work really nicely. They're not the most powerful brakes in the world, but you get a lot of feel from them. There's no grabbiness from the rear brake. At first when I got it, it was a little bit grabby, but now it's bedded in a little, it's much better. Front brake, I've done 2,100 miles and I can feel the tiniest, tiniest little bit of warpage from the brake. It's probably nothing that, that most of you would um, recognize, but 35 years of doing this, I get to know, and you can feel an ever so slight warpage of the front brake at slow speeds. Throttle delivery on it is incredibly good. There's no snatchiness. The fuel injection mapping on it 
when you're at slightly higher revs in slower traffic you can just about feel that tiny little bit of fuel injection jerkiness that you can get but it's hardly noticeable at higher speeds or if you go to a higher gear at lower speeds you don't notice it it's lovely the lights and indicators on these are fantastic at night the headlights don't half light the whole road up they're very very good the indicators are bright leds the brake lights are incredibly bright which is really good for letting following traffic know that you're braking or warning them that they're a little bit too close so i'm just at 2000 revs i'm going to go to fourth at 23 miles an hour i'm going to go to fifth at 23 in fact just for a laugh six gear 24 miles an hour <laughs> it pulls like a train awesome very very impressed with this not that i'm saying you should be riding in six gear at 30 miles an hour but the beauty of this is if you get it wrong the bike is quite forgiving the reason i chose the 800 over the 1200 was a weight b price and c i don't need all that extra power on these public roads with speed limits road condition limits and other traffic limits there's only so much you can do with the bike so i would rather take this bike to 80 percent of what it can do than my tuono to 30 percent of what it can do does that make sense weathering wise the frame and the swing arm is finished beautifully but the disc around the insides of the discs are starting to rust a little bit maybe that's something to do with the warpage maybe i need to have a look at the rivets that hold the disc on tam riding is really sweet on it second gear 15 miles an hour holding the throttle steady that's about 99 percent that's as bang on as you're going to get fuel injection very impressive if this was one of the aprilias like the shiver it would be unlivable with the bull just remember people it's unwritten in motorcycle law that when you go under a tunnel you just have to do that i've got cruise control on my car and i always use it this is just so helpful In conclusion, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bike. Really like it. It's quite a lot lighter than my Pan European. It rides lighter, sharper. I don't use the Pan anymore. This has replaced the Pan European. Fantastic, fantastic piece of kit. Only complaints are I'm worried about the screen, the TFT screen's longevity, and also when it gets to really hot summer. There's quite a lot of hot air blast here. I don't know how that's going to affect my legs. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to post comments, subscribe, etc, etc. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.